Gil, what do you find are some of the biggest misconceptions in regards to TRT that the general medical community has? Is this a medical school issue where limited time is put into hormones? Good question. So let me start off by saying it's not necessarily an educational deficit because they teach you the basics in any medical program, nursing program, PA program. They teach you the basics of physiology, pharmacology, how to care for people, primarily in a hospital setting. Until you get into specialties and clinicals, you're really just focusing on, on general, you know, uh, emergencies and, and, and traumas and, and, you know, cardiology and respiratory are big ones. Diabetes is a big one that's always, always uh, taught. Hormones is still relatively new in the medical field. If you look back, you know, 20 years ago plus, it was really just a bodybuilding thing. And if you go back to modern medicine, I mean, we're going back to, to the years of the Egyptians back in the pyramid days, I think, uh, when, when they started. You're talking thousands of years. So in modern day medicine, hormone replacement is an infant. It's, it's a newborn, essentially. So you have to give the educational facilities time to catch up. But I will say, when we were going over the endocrine system in school, to my dismay, the only thing they touched on was they said, if you replace hormones, and it was specifically for women, postmenopause, and they were going based on old studies with, you know, synthetic, uh, you know, conjugated equine estrogens that were known to cause breast cancer and whatnot. But they were saying how the risk of cancer is so prevalent that you're better off just aging gracefully and accepting it. And that's really where they touched on and they moved on from the topic. So they don't really teach anything about this in any medical institution, which is why it's funny to me when people say, you know, what's someone's credentials? Well, someone's credentials are going to have either a bias against it or they're going to have nothing at all. So it's really independent research that brings us here because I've never in my medical training learned anything about any of this. This was all independent research and experience and collaboration with others. Uh, so what we do is not taught in endocrinology. It's not taught in urology and it's not taught in gen general medicine. Uh, with that said, some of the myths and misconceptions are that testosterone is going to make your hair fall out. That's wrong. Testosterone is going to give you a heart attack. That's wrong. Testosterone is going to give you a stroke. That's wrong. It's going to cause hypertension or high blood pressure. Wrong. Uh, it's going to make you aggressive or angry or give you roid rage. It's wrong. All of these things are either completely false or manifestations of improper management, incorrect dosing, incorrect frequency, or gym bro type nonsense from the bodybuilding world that just spills into medicine. Remember, testosterone is a medication that was synthesized by doctors for use with patients with a deficiency. Bodybuilders found a way to abuse it for a specific benefit. And the only difference between use and abuse is the dose. And when you abuse something, you're going to have an adverse effect. All medications are abused, but we don't vilify those medications. We vilify the abuser. With hormones, we never vilify the abuser. We vilify the drug. And that's a problem. So change your mindset and stop thinking of testosterone as a villain.